Hey guys and welcome back! It's been a while again, but don't worry, I simply didn't find the time to devlog. The progress on the game kept going on. I still wanted to thank all of you for trying out the latest demo and giving feedback. I could gather new valuable conclusions and also brought some of them into the game already. More on that later. The demo is still up, so if you're new here and want to check out the latest state of my project, go ahead and try it out. Link in the description. With that being said, fasten your seatbelts, I've got heaps of new stuff to show you. One of the most important gameplay elements is progress. Why would you play a game where you cannot grow and become more powerful? That's why I added a Gunforge to my game where the player can unlock new weapons. It's called Chronoforge, a giant advanced 3D printer used for industrial applications. The player has to find special weapon blueprints first, which unlock different weapons for crafting. In addition, you will also need to spend the game's main resource, Unimed, for each craft. I've also wanted to make the crafting process as visible as possible, which is why I added different crafting animations. I think they turned out pretty cool. There's a total of 13 guns in the game right now, with different power levels ranging from pistols, SMGs, assault rifles and shotguns. Unlocked guns also get stashed at the Chrono Forge, allowing the player to switch his loadout throughout the game. With a bunch of new data to save, I wanted to talk about the save and load system again briefly. I definitely had some struggle with it at the beginning, but by now it's in a decent state. You are now able to load, save and overwrite save games at any radio station. Things like inventory data, player position, game progress and level triggers are then loaded and refreshed based on the save game data. It's still not perfect and there will be some more stuff to save and load, but I'm quite happy with it. Autosave is also something I'm thinking about. Generally it's a neat feature, but most survival horror titles depend on the fact that you can only save at certain positions. With the save and load system being functional on a basic level, I finally started to work on the character's death. It's pretty trivial. Once your health drops to zero, you die and have to restart at your last save game. I created a quick death animation and a little bit of UI to let the player decide on how to move on once dead. The gameplay feels a lot more complete now. The game's Steam page also feels a bit more complete now after I updated the screenshots. Make sure to add the game to your wishlist if you want to support me in this project for free. Thanks! I've been switching up the design of the basic zombie-like enemies. From a lore's perspective, these humans are infected with an extraterrestrial fungus and became undead. The most obvious property of said fungus is its spikes. The old ones looked rather thick, almost like little horns. Not dangerous at all. I switched it up so now they are way longer and appear in higher quantities but they are very thin and also a bit shiny, which makes it look way more uncomfortable in my opinion. I also adjusted the color scheme of the fungus. Now it's more of a black and white instead of green color tints. The next thing I improved was the Goliath boss fight. Having more feedback when damaging the robot was definitely something I read often in the last demo feedback survey. So I added some fire VFX to the tank of the Goliath to make it clear that his weak spot has been hit. I've also switched up the behavior of the Goliath. He will now spontaneously aggro on teammates which opens some opportunities. You can now command your teammates to move somewhere else and therefore make the Goliath expose his back to you. Overall I'm pretty happy with the boss so far. The next big addition is character callouts. I've been ordering the first voice package on Fiverr and added them to the game. Now all characters say some random things during gameplay. Stuff like swearing for example. 
I've also wanted to amplify the action of giving orders to your teammates. Now every order is underlined with a direct verbal callout from the main character. Sometimes with a response from teammates. Follow me! Positive! Secure this area. Positive. Follow me. Each callout has an internal cooldown, which makes me able to not turn everything into a verbal mess. And of course, everything is tied into my dialogue system, which includes subtitles. The system even supports different dialogue priorities now. When the player is running into a story relevant dialogue while already speaking, the current callout gets cut and the more important one starts. It's really baffling how much stuff you have to consider when developing a video game. A big problem I faced when working with dialogues and voices is the distance. Once you walk away from a talking character, you can't hear him anymore, which makes sense. That's how sound works. I solved this problem by adding a radio feature to the dialogue system. Now, whenever a character is speaking, I am playing two separate voice lines at once. The original voice line locally in 3D space and the same one globally with a radio filter, which starts muted. Based on the distance to the player, the volumes of both voice lines get blended, making it appear as if you hear your teammates talking over the radio, when too far away. Damn, what in the world? What happened here? Neurotoxin. I'm unforgiven neurotoxin. Looks like this entire facility got drenched in it, turning it into a death trap. Power's been knocked out too. We need to restore it ASAP. It works like a charm and definitely acts as another big chunk of polish in my game. Lastly, I wanted to give you guys a glimpse into the current state of the levels of the game. I decorated the control level quite a bit. There's now tons of props and stuff that makes the place appear more alive and lived in. It still looks a bit too pristine, but I'll be working on that. And corpses. I need to place a questionable amount of corpses, but I haven't found an efficient way to mass place them organically yet. The control level is definitely very advanced already. Its current state is close to my initial imagination of it. Once I add story dialogue to it and polish some things up, this level might be finished actually and can be turned into a vertical slice for YouTubers, streamers and journalists to play. We'll see. I've also been starting to work on the first level which plays in a dense forest at night. I've been showing conceptual footage of this one a year ago and it feels so nice to finally start working on the actual level. The level plays at night during a terrible thunderstorm, where the player has to find the entrance to the underground laboratory after suffering a helicopter crash. We will navigate through dark and constricting paths before finding an outpost which guards the entrance of the research facility. The whole surface appears destroyed and devastated due to a security protocol sent from within the laboratory. I think I quite nailed the look already. It looks wet and disgusting, exactly as I imagined it. But there's also a good amount that needs to be done here. So when looking at the level progress now, I soon will have two complete levels and I have the last level blocked out already. The biggest level is yet to be created, but overall I am very happy with the progress at the level design front. That's it for today's episode. I'm once again asking you to wishlist the game on Steam if this looks interesting to you. It's a simple but free way to support me in this project. It also keeps me motivated, which is hard sometimes as a solo developer, especially in times like these, 
where Unity does very questionable things. Thanks for your time, and as always, please do not spill your beer under any circumstances.